much for staying with us. Time now for Iron Africa with me, Georgie Calvin Smith. Tonight, tensions remain high in the northern Moroccan region of Rif in the wake of the arrest of a protest leader earlier this week. Thousands of people have been demonstrating for the release of Nasser Zefzasi. He'd been on the run for several days before being picked up by police. Also, tensions between separatists and central government are high in parts of southeastern Nigeria. Many Biafran separatists accuse the government of marginalizing and persecuting them. We hear from some of the independent activists at the heart of the standoff with Abuja. And we head to a township on the outskirts of Johannesburg that's seen frustration with Jacob Zuma's government and deepening inequality spill out into the streets. In Ennerdale, locals have clashed with police over the lack of jobs, healthcare and opportunity. But first, tensions remain high in the northern Moroccan region of Rif in the wake of the arrest of a protest leader earlier this week. Thousands of people have been demonstrating for the release of Nasser Zefsasi, who'd been on the run for several days before being picked up by police. He's the head of a popular movement calling for more local jobs and development and condemning corruption. Emotions ran high as thousands of people took to the streets of the Moroccan city of Al Husayma, demanding the release of Nasser Zefsasi. The activist is being held by authorities for being a threat to national security after three days on the run. He's accused of organizing months of protests, sparking social unrest. Zefsasi's supporters stand by his calls against corruption and unemployment in the neglected northern Rif region. His mother was among those marching for him to be freed. My son is asking for legitimate things. He wants a hospital, work for people, university. My son went out for his rights and nothing else. We're being repressed. I thank the people who supported us. 39 years old and unemployed, Zefsasi has emerged as the leader of the al hirak al-Shabi grassroots movement. It was inspired after the region was shaken by the death of a fisherman who was crushed inside a rubbish truck while trying to rescue his stock, which had been confiscated by the police for being caught out of season. Protesters are accusing authorities of abuse and injustice. It's a civilized demonstration. People are here to denounce the authorities and to say we're continuing our struggle with our legitimate demands. Unfortunately, we've been surprised by the presence of the repressive forces, which aren't letting citizens go back to their homes. Dozens of people have been arrested in the ongoing demonstrations. The mainly ethnic Berber Rif region has long had a tense relationship with Morocco's central authorities. It was also at the heart of the Arab Spring-inspired protests in 2011. In Ghana, five people have been arrested in connection to the lynching of a military commander earlier this week. Captain Maxwell Mahama died in the central upper Denkira district on Monday after he was attacked by a mob that reportedly believed that he was an armed robber. He'd allegedly been out jogging and was wearing casual clothes and carrying a pistol at the time. He was one of dozens of troops deployed to fight illegal gold mining in the area. Security services say that they're still looking for a number of other suspects. Seven police officers and one civilian were killed on Wednesday after their armoured vehicle ran over an improvised bomb in Mangai, southern Kenya. They'd been heading out to refuel at the time, and after the explosion, soldiers trying to rescue the victims came under fire. It's not clear if the civilian was in or near the carrier at the time. Last week, 14 officers were killed in three separate blasts involving roadside bombs in different regions of northeastern Kenya along the border with Somalia. Somali extremist group Al-Shabaab has claimed responsibility. Staying with Kenya, it finally inaugurated the $3.2 billion railway linking Nairobi to Mombasa. The section of the line opened on Wednesday and it will slash the time for the 472-kilometre journey from 12 to 4 hours. Funded by China, it's Kenya's biggest infrastructure project since independence 50 years ago. It's part of Beijing's One Belt, One Road initiative, the line is expected to eventually connect Uganda, Rwanda, Burundi, DRC, South Sudan and Ethiopia to Mombasa 
allowing the port city to become a gateway to East Africa for trade. Now, this week, parts of southeastern Nigeria were closed for business as an act of protest marking the 50th anniversary of Biafra's Declaration of Independence. That was on Tuesday. Well, tensions between separatists and central government are still high in the region. Many Igbo locals accuse the government of marginalizing and persecuting them. Our correspondent spent several days in Inugu, the former capital of the Biafran Republic, where he met with independence activists at the heart of the standoff with Abuja. These pro-Biafra activists have decided to cancel their attendance at a political rally after the organizer warned them not to come. They had been due to meet an hour away from Inugu, but the phone call cautioned them otherwise. Their safety was no longer guaranteed as access to the meeting hall had been blocked by the state governor. I can't describe how I feel that you are in a country where you are not free and you want to be free and your own people don't want you to be free. Fifty years after the declaration of secession of Biafra, social and political organizations are mobilizing. They denounce the marginalization of a region that produces at least 90 percent of Nigerian crude oil. We are Nigerians. We are Igbo in Nigeria. And we think that um, there is the need for us to make a decision about how Nigeria should be structured. At the headquarters of the movement of Biafrans in Nigeria, militants have joined several regional organizations to form a political coalition. The aim of the alliance is to support and defend secessionist candidates in parliamentary elections in 2019. We have tried to go to the street to demonstrate, and what we get is being killed by the guns of the enemy. Then we realize that since power is assessed in the parliament, we need to plant our people in the parliament to go there and make laws that will favor our In Enugu, despite the strength of their convictions, separatists worried about repercussions from police still feel the need to be discreet in discussing their hopes. Many are still haunted by the spectre of the million victims of the war that erupted five decades ago during the last bid to create an Igbo state. To a township on the outskirts, outskirts of Johannesburg now, it's seen frustration with Jacob Zuma's government and deepening inequality spill out into the streets. In Annadale, locals have clashed with police over the lack of jobs, health care and opportunity. Annadale, on the outskirts of Johannesburg's sprawling Soweto township, conceals deep frustrations. Over 20 years after the end of apartheid, many in the South African township lack running water, electricity and jobs. A few weeks ago, that anger exploded onto the streets. If the government is not doing anything about the situation we are in, it's just going to get worse and worse because the strikes before was better, now it's just getting worse and worse because the people can see that the government is not doing anything about our situation that we are in. There have been no homes built in Ennerdale since 1994, the year of Mandela's election. Of South Africa's 55 million people, 13% still live in informal dwellings. Ennerdale community organisers say violence is the only way to get politicians to listen. There is no houses built in Ennerdale in the last 28 to 30 years. So the reason why we went to the streets was to, to get the attention of government so that they can give us houses. According to Oxfam, three South African millionaires own the same as the poorest half of the population. Statistics like those, along with reports of government corruption, have caused deep anger among the poor. South Africa has become more and more like a powder keg that there have been sort of too, it's become too many things, too many things that aren't quite working, that are more and more likely to set people off, that lead to an explosion. The ANC-led government says that substantial progress has been made since Mandela's promise of a better life. Officials are pleading with communities to be patient, promising that the situation will improve. But residents in Ennerdale say they're tired of waiting and warn of more protests to come. Well, that's it for Iron Africa for now. Thanks very much for joining us and do so again. Take care.